Hey everyone, this is FixReef, and today we have an Apex display module. The stated problem is that it works mostly okay, but when plugged into the head unit, it causes the head unit to reboot randomly and periodically. So what we're going to do today is attempt to take it apart, find out where the problem is, and fix it. First of all, before I take it apart, I would like to uh, plug it in, plug it into Apex, and see if we get any type of output. So there it goes. Plug into Apex. Looks like the screen is lit. It's kind of dim. I'm not sure you can see much on here, but it is lit. Let's see what it does. Well, it appears that this display is actually working. The buttons seem to work, the screen seems to work, but the screen is kind of dim. So let's take it apart and see what's inside. This screw is quite corroded, but it seems to work. The cover is off. Let's see what we have. Made in China, 2010, October 19th. This side of the screen seems fairly good. Let's keep on disassembling. Okay, and so this is what we have on the front panel. Neptune seems to love the idea of running jumper wires from one connect from one chip to another. It's consistent. I've seen it on EB8s, EB832s, um, uh, displays. This cable is also frequently chewed up. All right, we're going to plug it in. Let's see if at any point in time the screen disconnects. Now the screen seems to be, um, as a display, it seems to be working pretty good. Let's take a look at this um, under the microscope. So under the microscope, I'm going to examine these areas and see if there is anything that jumps out. So you can see over here that obviously this was added after the fact. There's some soldering after everything was put together. So they run jumper wire from the spin over to this guy. But what is this? So this chip over here is the CAN transceiver. That's the one that connects this uh, display to Apex and allows Apex to talk to it. This has a hole in it. This chip has a hole in it. Okay. It appears that um, it can talk to Apex, it can do things, but clearly there is a problem. So let's diagnose what the problem is. I'm going to attach it to Apex once again to see if there is anything that I'm missing um, that's supposed to be on there. The chip is clearly burned out. So after some experimenting, the issue with Apex 
uh, display is that whenever it gets plugged into an EB8 or EB832, after a while it causes that EB832 uh, to, um, uh, to stop communicating to the head unit. And the same with the head unit. Uh, it is clear to me that this particular display is able to talk, but after some time, something happens with the communication and it causes the uh, head unit or the EB8 or EB832 to start rebooting. And the reason for that is this failing um, uh, transceiver, Max Fury 59. This transceiver is a, a 5 volt CAN transceiver that works, uh, that exists in all of the old pre uh, Apex 2016 versions of Apex, all of the classic Apexes. The newer versions have a 3.3 volt version of this chip. So to fix this problem, we are going to attempt to uh, remove the failed component and replace it with a brand new one. So let's get started. First, we are going to remove the jumper wire. This should be fairly straightforward. Okay, set it aside. Now we're going to use the hard air to remove the failed component. It looks like one of the capacitors got knocked off loose. Let's put it back in place before we do anything else, before we lose it. Very nice. Next, I'm going to uh, weak off all of the um, unleaded solder. Clean up the pads, clean up the, the work area. Unlike Apex, I'm going to actually make this to look really nice and clean. Get rid of all of the um, flux residue. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of nice clean layer solder. Beautiful. Now let's find a replacement part. All right, now I have the port. We'll just have to put it back in place. This is a Max 3059. It's positioned in place. Add a little bit of flux to both ends. And let's order it in place. Because this is now let it solder. Uh, soldering is actually going to be much, much easier. Because the, low, the, the melting temperature is lower. Looks really good. Before we finish, I'm going to go through each pin. Uh, maybe add a little bit more solder just to make sure that everything's connecting well. Very well. And the last thing to do is to attach the jumper wire back. Mm. 
Now let's do the final cleanup. Very nice and clean. Now that the transceiver has been replaced, uh, let's do the, do the final test, connecting it to Apex and make sure, making sure that everything works well. Okay, I can see that it's showing well status. Everything is good. I finally found out how to change the brightness on it. So we're going to improve brightness so that you can see what's going on on the screen. It seems to be working and it seems to be talking to the Apex. And the Apex is not going into the reboot every um, few minutes or so. It appears that this display is fixed. Off the camera, I'm going to fix the cable. Then I will reassemble and test for the last time. All right, let's do the final assembly. The unit is assembled, and let's do the final test to make sure that the, uh, all the buttons work and the screen works. Okay, so far so good. It looks like everything's working. This completes the repair of this Apex uh, display module. This is a very common problem across the entire line of Apex products. If you see that your head unit is randomly rebooting and restarting either the classic uh, head unit or the new Apex, uh, then this is likely your problem. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.